Meredith? Hi, Aaron. Any update on Aaron Judge? Uh, <clears throat> better today. Was able to, uh, you know, to do some more stuff. He's actually in there uh, working out right now in the weight room. Um, was able to take some swings in the cage. So uh, another good step for him today. Um, so we'll see, you know, uh, <clears throat> if if he's in there tomorrow or not. I don't know. It's just he's still got to get a little improvement in there, but we'll, we'll see how he's doing tomorrow. But pretty good day overall. When you say a little improvement, what is it that he's still feeling in his neck? Well, I just think he's able. He's got way more range of motion, and you know they've gotten a lot of that pain out of there when he you know turns to the side and things like that. So um, I think quite a bit better today. Anything new with Masahiro as far as a potential throw date? Um, I have a potential throw date, but um, uh, but he's he's doing he's he's doing well. You know, I mean, he he ramped up a little bit more today. He was out there obviously throwing again today. I think he got a lower body workout in today and continues to respond. Um, you know, the right right way with the added workload. So. Encourage, but again, just also making sure we, we go slow and smartly with it. I know you don't really want to get into specifics, but any indication on whether or not DJ or Sessa could become available soon? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Take the next question from Ken Davidoff. Ken? Aaron. Mm -hmm. uh, just going back to Judge, obviously, anytime he's off the field, it, it's, it gets attention because of who he is and, and how good he is. Yeah. Uh, do you see any uh, pattern? I mean, you know, I, I, back in 18, he got hit by a pitch. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, he's missed a lot of time uh, over the last couple of years. Obviously, would have missed probably all the time uh, leading up to now, if not for the pandemic. I mean, do you see any sort of concerning pattern we're just talking about this guy's potential and, and his ceiling? Uh, I don't. Um, I, I do think he's smart about how he takes care of himself. I think a few of the injuries, you know, the, the cracked rib that he ended up having that took a long time, obviously, to diagnose. I think, so. you know, a little fluky on a diving play. Obviously, the hit by the pitch. I know he, he had the oblique. Um, so, so there's no question he's had some things. But um, I, I feel comfortable with, you know, first of all, the work he does and – um, you know, the, 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 what he puts into making sure he takes care of himself with the ability of the post and he understands the importance of it. And, um, you know, time will tell, but I do feel like, um, it is something that he'll, he'll, it'll prove out that he, he's a durable guy. Um, I do feel that way. Do you think you look at him and, and Giancarlo, do you think size factors into that? You know, bigger the guy like a cruise ship, like more, more right. things to be running smoothly for it to operate. I mean, that's, that's obviously a go-to if somebody is breaking down, we're, we're going to pick out, you know, he's too small, he's too big, he's too explosive. He's too, you know, you're always going to point to the, or speculate of why you think somebody might be breaking down. Um, so I don't think there's much to it, but you know, <laughs> He, the injuries he's had and he's bigger that's a talking point thanks sir mm -hmm. mr ron blum go ahead and unmute this is a team that uh, aaron over the last 15 years has taken 10 20 games to find itself usually is it any more important uh, in a 60 game season to get off to a seven and three, eight and two, nine and one start than elsewhere other years? Is that a message you emphasize or not? Well, I think by definition, the games are more important when they're only 60, right? Um, but no, I, I, you know, we're not trying to go out and, and win eight, go eight and two. You know, we, you know, as, as much as it's a sports cliche, we are consumed with the day. And, you know, today's a day we're not, uh, playing an inter squad game, but there were a lot of things we needed to work on um, to try and get ourselves ready to be the best team we can be um, starting on the 23rd of, of July. I mean, so that's the focus, and we, and we can't go eight and two on July 23rd. I mean, it's, it's, 
you know, who are we playing? What are we up against? What's the game plan? And, and trying to go out and, and be our best. And hopefully over time, in this case, a 60 game season, it'll be good enough that we get to play, play for uh, play for a championship. Do the players look to you self-focused with the goal ahead and no distractions from the pandemic? Or is that something Could you ask that you again? Have to... Could you ask that again? Do the players to you, do you have to guard against the lack of focus because of the pandemic and all the issues you don't normally face? Or is that something the group as itself takes care of and you don't have to concern yourself with? Well, I mean, I have to concern myself with that too. Um, I trust that it's going to be a strength of ours, um, but it doesn't mean that <clears throat> we don't reinforce that from time to time, um, you know, because I do think there's there's two things this year that, um, unlike any other year, are, have a chance to be separators to some degree, and that is how does how do you handle on a day in and day out basis, not just today and tomorrow, but six weeks from now, you know, when you're in the grind of a season and it's challenging and it's tough and you're going through the monotony of all the protocols you got to go through every day. Um, you know, who stays on top of that and handles that the best? Um, I think there's an advantage, a competitive advantage to be gained there. Um, you know, if we're playing in a scenario where there's no fans in the stands and you're getting used to, you know, how to find that gear, or how to find that energy in a, in a situation that you're not used to, I think that's a there's a competitive advantage to gain that we have to take advantage of, and it's something that we will focus on a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take the next question from Christy Ackert. Christy, go ahead. Hey, Aaron. Uh, just wondering, do you have uh, the pitchers who will be starting those intra squad games? Uh, Monty will start tomorrow along with uh, Chad Green. Um, the next day is oh, PAX. Okay. And I'm and yeah, I'm not sure on the other side. And just with Tanaka, without going into what day he's going to throw mm -hmm. up a mound, do you have enough time to get him ready for that first week of the season? Well, I mean, it depends what you define ready. I mean, obviously, you know, it's he's not going to be built up very much. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of a step at a time right now with Massa. I mean, you know, he's getting to the point to where the next step will be getting on the mound and seeing how he responds from a side. And then, you know, <clears throat> when is he able to face hitters, if that's able to happen between now and the next week or two. So these are things that will determine themselves. Obviously, with an extended roster, there's there's a little more flexibility there at the start to if if we have to creatively build him up at some point. Um, you know, but I, first things first, today was another positive day and ho hopefully we keep moving forward. Okay. And just quickly on another topic, mm -hmm. you have a lot of prospects here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the progress or the progression of these players is going to be stinted a little bit by the fact there's no minor league system. How do you balance, you know, their development with what you're trying to do here? Yeah. I mean, obviously it's, it's what every organization's facing, um, you know, I feel like our player development um, group has done a really good job, not only now, but 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 even when guys were in quarantine in a way of trying to be creative and and smartly still be able to in creative ways work on your game and 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 make some small improvements while you're away. look, there's there's no substitute for for a season. and missing out on a season is a tough thing for. For especially young players in their development process but um you know there's you know i talk about these you got to gain competitive advantages this is another area where hey can we can we help our guys get a little bit better in this environment i think the teams that are creative and can effectively communicate and do that we'll 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 see a little advantage moving forward thank you mm -hmm. james wagner you can unmute Got a next question. Hey, Aaron. Uh, I know there's a, obviously a lot of regulations to deal with this year, especially involving people with players with as a positive. But like, 
I know there's the MLB side, but are there like city or like state things that you have to check off on your end before they can even come back like, on top of that too? Like requirements like that New York City, for example, might be asking you guys to meet as well. Um, you mean when we come off a road trip or something? No, sorry, players that have tested positive. Sorry, like the guys that you're waiting here. Oh, I'm sorry. DJ or them. Are there things that they have to check off on that New York is asking you? As well. I'm I'm not sure if it's New York related. I mean, obviously MLB has a you know agreement with all the states and municipalities and things like that. Um, I know when they're away, you know that there's got to be two negative tests to start, and then you've got to go through the intake here, which is. But I think if you satisfy all those things, uh, then you're then you're free to come come back into the state. Mm-hmm. Take the next question from George King. Go ahead, George. My question has been asked and answered. Thank you. Thanks, Georgie. Eric Boland. Go ahead and unmute. Hey, Aaron, have, uh, have you made a determination if Cole will go on his fifth day on Friday or if you'll give him the sixth and, and he'll pitch in that exhibition game? Yeah, he'll go Friday. He's going to go Friday. Okay. Yep. Is that just to keep him on the every fifth day, or is there a strategic? Well, there's a little strategic. We He and I talked about it a little bit today. Um, I think we just value, you know, having that sixth day going into his first start uh, of the year, which will obviously be in Washington. So, um, you know, we could have taken it now, but um, felt like <clears throat> if we took it now, then he'd be rolling into his opening day start on 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 the fifth day coming off of a time when maybe we're trying to push him a little bit so uh yeah he's gonna go friday thank you mm -hmm. I'll take a final question from max goodman max go ahead hey aaron i was just wondering about uh rosel herrera mm -hmm. he he started at second on thursday mm -hmm. then the the rain out on friday and then i don't think i've seen him out there since then like yeah he wasn't in he's the dealing with some club. heel issues um so it's yeah he's he's both heels which we're starting to give him a little bit of a problem in in spring training um he so he's he's just you know physically unable to go right now 